even though their development is at a very low stage their regulatory bodies are much far better than uh, what we have in our countries uh, if that happens definitely achieving this uh, target by 2030 is a reality but in the long run as you said uh, the ceylon electricity board generation transmission and distribution uh, it's a monopoly at the moment they should held accountable for the uh, the relevant sectors i am manjula pereira you are watching market inside sri lanka Welcome to another episode of Market Insight Sri Lanka. As always, we are here to discuss with prominent business leaders from around the country on everything you need to know about the capital markets. Don't forget to join us on this journey as we will be providing you with some insightful information. So don't forget to subscribe and click on the bell icon below to be notified and be on the loop about everything we do. Initial public offerings or IPOs are when the private companies issue shares to the public through the Colombo Stock Exchange and raise capital. And in the year 2021, we saw few IPOs coming on board after a long break. And today we have the privilege of having the managing director of one of the latest listed companies in the Colombo Stock Exchange. Mr. Manjula Pereira, the Managing Director of Windforce PLC. Manjula, thank you very much for being with us today. Thank you for inviting. Uh, Manjula, Windforce is the uh, very new addition to the Colombo Stock Exchange. Yes. And uh, as it is still new for most of our invi investors, why don't you give us a little bit of background about the company and also about yourself to start off the conversation yeah uh, so winfo started uh, the journey in the year 2010 uh, before that i was working for one of the biggest private power producers in sri lanka and uh, that um, in 2006 um, i was studying the potential for wind power development in sri lanka and uh, with at that time the the wind study report was has been published for sri lanka by uh, national renewable energy authority of usa so they identified the potential of about 20000 megawatts of wind power potential for sri lanka so that i saw as an opportunity because by that time there was not a single private power uh, producer with uh, uh, wind power development only there was a very small pilot project done by the ceylon electricity board in hambantota in year 1998 and that was also a failure so nobody was keen to enter into the wind industry so uh, i left the organization which i was working for and and uh, started applying for three wind power licenses in putlam district and uh, by 2008 uh, i got all the three licenses because nobody was interested the government offered all three licenses then uh, went looking for investors and uh, akbar brothers and hydramanis uh, both family owned companies were uh, very keen to uh, partner with uh, me, with me and uh, that's how we started the journey in 2010 and uh, uh, so then we pioneered the wind industry by developing the first private sector wind plant in putlam uh in 2010 so that's how the journey started <laughs> so there after it, it it's a long journey it's it's not very long also 11 years we have managed to be a successful renewable energy developer in the country okay so you were there from the beginning of uh, winfos plc and uh, these two partners yes. joined with you uh, on started the with the two partners uh, mm -hmm. Agbas and Hydramanis, as well as uh, Debug Computers. So okay. those were the three partners who started uh, with me. Okay, uh, and Manjula, then what is the driving force behind Windforce going public? Uh, like, as I said, uh, uh, the the initial investment was through the these three three family-owned companies, mm -hmm. and uh, we continue to grow. 
uh, quite fast. Uh, within a very short period of about four to five years, we became the uh, leader in renewable energy in Sri Lanka. If you take uh, as compared to other renewable energy developers in the country, many started in year 1996 when the renewable energy success started. But we managed to uh, go beyond many of them and become the leader within a very short period. And down the line, uh, all the investments came through, uh, came with these three family uh, owned companies. But then down the line when we were growing, there were many smaller shareholders who joined the company as, as uh, through private placements. So when many smaller ones joined, we made a promise to them that one day when, when we are at a stage where, where we can go public, we will definitely uh, make it public so that uh, the transparency, then liquidity and all these benefits will be there in the organization. So that's led us to uh, the IPO uh, after 11 years. <laughs> okay. So uh, it's basically for that uh, small investors who joined you through private placement, they also have some liquidity and also an exit uh, strategy yes, as exit well? Yes, exit as well as for them to uh, increase their shareholding if, uh, if they wish to. If they wish to. <laughs> Great. Uh, and also can you tell us uh, your experience of the listing process? Um, what are your challenges and how did you overcome uh, the challenges? In fact, we were very lucky to be the, the first IPO in, in the year 2021 and, and the first company to go for listing after the, uh, digitization of the, the CSC. And for us, it was a very smooth process and our financial advisors were Cal and CT jointly and they also supported us. and. Uh, it, uh, uh, even the CSE chairman uh, mentioned this uh, during the, uh, the serum, uh, event that the listing took place within three weeks. I think no, no one has done a listing uh, at the Columbus Stock Exchange within three weeks. Okay. Um, because we were well prepared uh, mm -hmm. for the uh, uh, listing, uh, it was only a short uh, <laughs> period. So that means after you uh, submitted the application within three weeks, three weeks uh, we managed to get the CAC approval, approval to, to list. So that is well prepare, preparation and prior yes, hand. Yes. So how, how long have you been prepared uh, for the In, in fact, in, like in year, uh, two years ago, we did a valuation of, of the com uh, Originally, we, we had two uh, holding companies, WindForce for wind and solar and Renewgen for uh, small hydropower projects. So two years ago, we did a valuation and merge the, both the companies into WindForce, under WindForce. So after valuation, we got it prepared for a IPO as well. So uh, we were well prepared when we were, uh, we decided to go for the IPO. Okay, that's, uh, that's some <laughs> great news actually. I think that's a record. And uh, also, um, Manjana, now, now that you are a uh, MDO, you are heading a listed company and before that it was a privately held yes. company. Yes. So uh, what are the differences you see? Uh, the biggest uh, challenge we have is now uh, we had a family culture when we started and when we grew. And uh, But when you grow and when you also in the stock exchange, you have to bring in the uh, corporate culture as well. So balancing the corporate culture without damaging the family culture is the challenge which we are trying to balance uh, balance uh, within the organization because we don't want to lose that uh, culture we had. Uh, but uh, there are a lot of new things coming in like the corporate governance, then uh, for uh, quarterly reporting, then annual reporting, then we have to regularize the HR functions. Then cyber security, there are so many additions which was not there, which we are streamlining now. Uh, challenging but interesting as well. <laughs> okay. Um, so do you get advice on these things or uh, on the way um, you get yourself prepared for the regulatory requirements and the compliance requirements uh, which are additional than the, when you were as a privately held company? We are managing by ourselves. <laughs> Great. Okay. And, uh, 
No, uh, the main highlight of the WinForce IPO was, uh, Manjula, I think you attracted uh, foreign investors as well. Yes. And um, also it was oversubscribed by eight times. Yes. So uh, after a long break of uh, we seeing IPOs in the market, this was a huge success. And uh, actually at a time where foreign investors are Putting basically in. moving out of the Colombo Stock Exchange, yeah. So, what is your secret behind this success? Uh, it is mainly to do with the renewable energy industry. The mm -hmm. whole world is going for uh, green energy. If you look at the growth in uh, power sector in year 2020 and 21, the more than 60% of the growth has come from the renewable energy sector. And uh, so, there are a lot of DFIs who are very keen to invest in uh, renewable energy and they, some of the countries, they have mandates to uh, invest in uh, renewable energy. And uh, in the meantime, they have all these uh, foreign investors, we had discussions before the IPO, many uh, discussions, so they were uh, quite keen to see the growth of uh, WinForce beyond Sri Lanka as well. And we are in Africa and we are in Pakistan. Uh, so, they had a lot of confidence uh, uh, in our growth uh, in the future. Okay. And um, uh, can you tell us a little bit about the renewable energy industry, particularly in Sri Lanka? Uh, how, what are the future potentials and uh, how do you see this uh, renewable energy industry going forward? I will. Uh, take one step back and just explain you how it was and, and how the future will look like. This was started in 1996 uh, with the small hydropower industry. Uh, one Mr. Sumana Sekara started the first private uh, sector small hydropower plant in Sri Lanka. Thereafter, uh, this was under the feeding tariff. Uh, what feed-in tariff means is every year the, the utility that is Ceylon Electricity Board uh, publishes the tariff, uh, renewable energy tariffs for wind, solar and hydro for that year. Whoever has the funding as well as the technical capacity can identify a site and develop. So up to 2015, the industry was growing at a very fast, rapid rate and that's how we also could from 2010 uh, grew at a rapid rate. But in 2015, the policy changed from uh, feed-in tariff to tendering. Where, so everyone has to bid for uh, on a competitive tendering basis for the tariff. So it was uh, a complete change in the system. And there was a lull period of about two years where nothing happened in the country. But for us, for our fortune, that, that's where our eyes open to see and look at the option for international markets. And in 2017, we got the first project in Uganda. So that change in policy in Sri Lanka led us to uh, 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 enter into the international markets. But in, in our country, because of this tendering process, many uh, uh, people who were not in the industry bid for very low tariffs and could not develop projects and uh, up to date the growth was quite uh, on a slow rate. Uh, when this new government came, they came up with a very aggressive policy now to develop 70% seven, uh, of Sri Lanka's energy requirement through renewable energy by 2030. We are at 40% now. <laughs> So within nine years, we have to add another 30 percent through renewable energy. That is more than 5,500 megawatts to be added to the system through renewable energy. At the moment, what we have only about 850 coming from this non-conventional renewable energy and the large, large scale hydropower plant. So it's a quite a task, but it's a good um, opportunity for the industry. But if we are to continue with the tendering process, achieving that target will be quite a challenge. Uh, we have seen the government uh, already taking steps to go back into the feed-in tariff. Uh, and uh, if that happens, definitely achieving this uh, target by 2030 is a reality. 
Okay, great. Uh, so thank you, Manjula. We'll go for a quick break and we'll be right back. Welcome back. You are with Market Insight Sri Lanka and we are having the discussion with Mr. Manjula Pereira, the Managing Director of Winforce PLC. Manjula, as you correctly touched upon uh, before the break, uh, this electricity generation, the industry is highly regulated yes. and also um, the government has a significant influence over the industry and uh, not only the power generation, even the transmission. So that throughout the process, it's uh, highly regulated. Uh, so how do you find uh, doing business in this kind of uh, industry with uh, high regularized and with government influence? Uh, uh, it is challenging as well as uh, beneficial for organizations like ours because now we have gone through the process and we know how to uh, be in the business. So when it is... Uh, uh, when everybody can do business, so everybody has the same opportunity. But uh, when it is challenging, the best will have the, uh, the better results. So we have made use of that. And uh, But in the long run, as you said, uh, the Ceylon electricity port, generation, transmission and distribution, uh, it's a monopoly at the moment. At, at least for future benefit of the industry, at least these two, three sectors uh, should be uh, running on an autonomous basis where they are they held they should held accountable for the uh, the relevant sectors like generation transmission and distribution uh, not only CEB uh, like when we are to do a renewable energy project we have to get approvals from 26 authorities in the country uh, that process takes at least uh, one year to get all the approvals. Uh, for, for us to construct a project, it takes only about six months. <laughs> so there are a lot of uh, things to be streamlined. There again, we have mastered that, so we can get all these approvals within a period of about six months. Uh, so <laughs> so uh, for us, it is to the benefit, but for the country, I think those things should uh, uh, streamline in the future if we are to go for the 70 percent uh, target by 2030. The target is uh, actually a good thing but uh, working for towards that is a bit of a challenge in the current uh, Yes, there condition. should be many changes taking place uh, to help to achieve that target. So in your opinion what should be the changes? Uh, like the for renewable energy sector there is the, the main uh, authority which is the sustainable energy authority this was formulated um, in 2008 or so as a one stop shop where the renewable energy developers apply to the sustainable energy authority and they will take care of all the approvals and then we we will have to build the plant but uh, unfortunately that became another stop only instead of a one stop so but as per the the act SEA has the power to uh, get these things done uh, as a one-stop shop. So that should happen uh, for us to uh, have the rapid growth. Okay. And uh, also, Manjula, now, uh, as you correctly touched upon earlier as well, Windforce has gone for private placement few times uh, yes. before the IPO. And uh, in your opinion, how important is the capital market? to raise funds. Was it easier to do the private placements or through capital markets? What is the importance uh, you see? Uh, private placements are good when the uh, when you are raising small uh, chunks of uh, money. But uh, even we tried the private placement option before going for the IPO for larger. Uh, now this is for 15% uh, uh, of the new shares for 3.2. Uh, billion uh, to raise 3.2 billion uh, but when you go to that scale in private uh, placements we see a lot of conditions coming upon the uh, the majority uh, shareholders of the, the company which nobody would like but when you go for an IPO 
uh, it's everyone is uh, considered equal and uh, your investor portfolio also becomes much bigger uh, that is definitely much better than uh, going for a private placement okay. but there there are challenges of uh, having these uh, regulatory regulatory requirements all that but uh, in time to come uh, we we will get used to those okay and uh, manjana you know, uh, usually a vibrant share market in any country would help the businesses to raise capital easily and uh, in the current condition in the sri lanka with the experience you have been through uh, do you think that this is uh, well facilitated whether it is facilitated enough in sri lanka or uh, there is in room for improvement uh, i think our ipo is the best example uh, where we went to the market when the market was completely down and um, we were eight times oversubscribed so if the right companies with the right asset values and growth comes into the market i i don't see any uh, difficulty in raising uh, funds in the uh, stock market in sri lanka there are enough investors who are keen and especially in a market condition like this where the uh, the returns from investment uh, like keeping your money in banks is no use so people are looking for good investments so uh, in your opinion the bank interest rates uh, at these current level definitely help uh, the businesses to raise capital definitely as definitely well? for sure okay and uh, also uh, manjula now the equity market especially in sri lanka we have seen that from 2000 to 2019 it was kind of a dark era and we didn't see many ipos coming up and even though the listed companies really performed well and made profits the share prices were declining and uh, now that you are a head, you are heading a listed company uh, in these kind of situations like even though your company does very well but uh, due to other concerns the share market the share price would be declining if that kind of a situation comes up again would that be a concern concerning situation for you or how um, do you manage it not at all if you see our our market price uh, it has gone up uh, quite significantly from the ipo and when the other prices were going down our price was uh, our price is still uh, maintaining stable uh, because uh, if your organization is give, uh, is uh, has given good returns over the years and uh, you have a, a very good growth uh, um, plan and a good asset value i don't think uh, uh, there is no, nothing to be worried by the shareholders and also uh, shareholders also should look at uh, the long term returns uh, what why our uh, from my knowledge i am not a share market expert but from my knowledge there are many investors uh, putting money in the colombo stock exchange expecting uh, quick returns uh, but the, the in reality the stock market should be for not for quick returns for people to invest in good organizations and and make returns in the long run if you if you change your mindset to that uh, then definitely uh, there is nothing wrong in the market it is the attitude of the uh, investors investors so uh, as you said like uh, capital markets is not for short term investments that's by definition it has to be a long term investment yes exactly and it's uh, joining with the success story of a company as an investor Correct. for quite some time and get the returns Correct. at the end of it yes okay and um, also um, the economic conditions also affects the share price and uh, do you really think that uh, the share price of winfors at the moment does it reflect the value of the company or uh, what is the situation in your opinion uh, we went for the ipo at 16 rupees we are trading at now at 19 rupees and we when we did the valuation of the organization uh, the valuation came at 1850 but we went at 16 rupees because we wanted for the shareholders to uh, have a gain at the very first instance and and have confidence in the in the company 
and uh, automatically trading has gone to the realistic value uh, in the market within few uh, within within the first uh, two days it came to the realistic valuation so uh, it is uh, de definitely marketing at the correct price okay and maintaining this level yeah, maintaining the same and we will def you will definitely see a better uh, even better market price because we have stick to our ipo growth pattern uh, where we have secured all the uh, committed uh, projects as well for the future yes so uh, the objectives uh, which were mentioned in the ipo when you came listed yes. so that the, the projects uh, how far you have gone uh, through the projects at the by now yeah so there was one project which was not even in the uh, ipo listing which we have already started okay <laughs> uh, that's a 10 megawatt uh, solar project uh, in uh, batiklo mm -hmm. uh, uh, with in partnership with uh, vidulanka and high energy uh, then uh, there was one project in the ipo which is a 15 megawatt mana wind farm that was awarded two weeks ago uh, that will also be, be starting construction very soon uh, there was uh, the third project in the ipo was the 30 megawatt uh, solar project in senegal which uh, has got delayed due to travel restrictions uh, uh, from sri lanka to senegal but we have come up with the alternate uh, project it's even a big much bigger project where we have signed the share sale and purchase agreement with for uh, 500 metric tons per day uh, waste energy project in Karadiana. Mm -hmm. So uh, that project uh, is under technical evaluation uh, for our new proposal and it will go to the cabinet very soon uh, for the share transfer. If, if that project comes, it's a, 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 a quite a big uh, mm -hmm. increase to our portfolio. Okay. And uh, what are the mechanisms uh, you use to maintain the investor relationships uh, as a public company? Uh, there are CSE requirements uh, like the, one, the quarterly reports, uh, then the annual report. We are targeting to win the uh, annual report competition as well in the first year itself. Wow, okay. <laughs> Hopefully. Mm -hmm. uh, then uh, one of the strongest m methods used uh, now is the social media. So we are uh, updating the organization's day-to-day uh, -day businesses, even day-to-day -day businesses through the three social medias, Facebook, uh, LinkedIn and Instagram because, uh, you know, uh, from what I heard, 90% of the uh, CSC shareholders now are below 30 years because of the technology and the digitization of CSC. So, uh, social media is one of the closest way to uh, get closer to them. Okay. Uh, so, thank you Manjula. We will take a quick break and we will be right back. Welcome back. You are with Market Insight Sri Lanka and we are having a discussion with Mr. Manchula Pereira, the Managing Director of Windforce PLC. Manchula, as you correctly touched upon just before the break, uh, the digitalization process of the Colombo Stock Exchange, uh, I think that would have been a blessing for Windforce IPO as well because your IPO went uh, at a time there were so many restrictions in the country due to the pandemic. Yes. So uh, what are your views about the digitalization process of the stock exchange and uh, how the dynamics have changed with I that? I think that's, that's the best that would have happened uh, because otherwise us going public in three weeks would have been a, a nightmare. And also, uh, as I said earlier, the, uh, the new, new generation uh, is very much in, in the Calambo Stock Exchange because of the digitization, uh, the figure which I said 90% of uh, the new uh, investors being below 30 years uh, is uh, thanks to the digitization of uh, CSE. Okay. And uh, also, Manjula, now uh, 
with these developments and uh, there's a, as you correctly said, uh, there's a new generation of investors who have in entered the Columbus Stock Exchange and uh, they're using social media, as you said, very heavily. And you also must have seen uh, various YouTube videos and discussions and valuations and things like that uh, done by various people, these young uh, investors, about Windforce PLC as well. So um, at the time of IPO and maybe after that as well. And how do you think uh, these things will affect the company, uh, the share price of Windforce? And do you think it's a welcoming uh, change or will it be a problem, uh, challenge? Uh, like, like we have also been approached by so many social media uh, parties on analysis. Uh, I have not seen any challenging thing uh, from them because uh, we are in the real world projects of renewable energy. They are like in our case, they are very keen to know more than uh, uh, analyze the, to know the subject and and um, and uh, present them to uh, the general public. Uh, I think it's a very good trend. Okay, and you must be using it uh, rather than yeah, even, shying even away we from are, it. Even we are using it very much to educate the general public on renewable energy more than the, if you look at our uh, social media uh, the, um, information which we give more than the organization, it's about the renewable energy industry and its trends so that uh, the people get to know what this is. Uh, and Manchana, now uh, we talked about uh, the Ceylon Electricity Board a little while ago. Yes. And uh, as a energy sector company, you are dealing with uh, this in a CEB a lot, uh, which is a standard state-owned enterprise. And uh, do you think SOEs like uh, CEB should be should go public? Should be listed? Uh, Hundred percent in agreement because then the, they also will face the accountability uh, to the general public. Uh, at the moment, it's uh, the company, the uh, CEB is running at a huge loss for the last so many years. So uh, if they go public, then they have to uh, make sure that the organization run in a profitable manner. And at, I mean, uh, uh, being a monopoly is not, not good for any industry. I think uh, uh, at least, uh, as I said earlier, they should be held accountable. They should be separated into generation, transmission and distribution, or even go to the extent of um, uh, managing the organization as a private organization while the ownership being uh, with, uh, with the state. And uh, uh, Manjula, now um, usually now the uh, when you're going for renewable energy industry, that coupled with sustainability, yes. and uh, when at a time where the whole world is uh, challenged by environmental changes, and uh, when we are going through all these uh, challenges, how far the sustainability matters, and how far wind force is uh, according to sustainability and uh, green energy concept? So, we are in the industry of sustainable uh, development. Um, as I said earlier also, the, the biggest uh, growth in uh, uh, the power sector is towards uh, renewable energy because of the sustainability. Uh, the world has realized that for the uh, temperatures uh, to maintain at the nine. Uh, if we are to continue like this, the the temperature increase in the world will be about 1.5 degrees. Uh, so we have to uh, change to renewable energy quite fast. That is why where the uh, the in France this. Um, uh, carbon reduction program also came very drastically. Most of the countries went to 100% renewable energy targets to achieve the sustainability uh, requirements. 
uh, that's how Sri Lanka also committed 70 percent by uh, 2030. Uh, so, it's a huge uh, task uh, for all the countries to uh, achieve that. Okay. And um, as Windforce is a global entity and not only limited to Sri Lanka, uh, what are the differences you see in the countries that you are operating uh, when it comes to sustainability? Yeah, so, we are in Africa, uh, in specifically in Uganda, uh, Pakistan and uh, Ukraine. Uh, why we went to Africa is uh, electrification wise they are at a very uh, low level of electrification. We went to Uganda in year 2015, uh, by that time the electrification was only 20 percent uh, and now it has come to about 40 percent. Uh, but there are so many African uh, countries they are at a very low level of electrification. So, the growth potential for renewable energy as well, uh, the, the whole power sector is mainly in Africa. And um, uh, even though their development is at a very low stage, their regulatory bodies are much far better than uh, what we have in our countries. Uh, so, doing, doing business is quite easy. And also, uh, the revenues are in USD. So, we are uh, giving the country a benefit of uh, bringing uh, foreign currency into the country as well by uh, developing projects in Sri Lanka. Uh, Pakistan, uh, we have a very strong partner in Pakistan. Uh, we started the 18 megawatt project, now then we did a 50 megawatt, now we are going for a 150 megawatt tender. So, uh, it is a country with uh, ample opportunity and Sri Lankans are quite welcome in, in, in Pakistan. Um, and we are very strongly looking at Bangladesh as well uh, for future developments because our, uh, one of the main partners, Hydramanis, are very strong in uh, Pakistan, uh, sorry, in Bangladesh. So, uh, very keen to uh, grow in uh, international markets. At the moment of our revenues, about 70 percent is coming from Sri Lanka, 30 percent is from uh, overseas. So, we want to change that mix to 60, 40, we have the 40 percent if the revenue is coming from uh, overseas markets. So, the country also will benefit by us bringing in foreign currency to the country. Okay. And uh, other than that, uh, what else the future holds for wind force? Um, uh, our biggest strength is, is our human capital. Uh, one of the biggest benefits of IPO was that we managed to uh, uh, bring all the the senior uh, and all the employees of Winforce also as part of the shareholding. Uh, we offered seven and a half percent of the shares to employees on a priority basis. Now they are all uh, part of the organization. That was one of the, my dreams when I started uh, the business, so that to make sure that. Uh, everyone is part of the uh, growth and uh, we want to make uh, this uh, organization is, uh, as the best place to work. Uh, uh, I am quite confident they are quite happy being with us. So the, when we started the organization it was only with 10 people. Today all those 10 people are there. So, we want to retain our employees. Uh, as a happy family and uh, we are looking to grow the organization so that um, at the moment we have 218 megawatts, 27 power plants. Uh, we want to reach 500 megawatts by 2026 within the next uh, five years and retain as the leading renewable energies in Sri Lanka and also to grow our footprint in the international markets. Great. <laughs> That's a great vision, uh, Manjana. And uh, also, recently we saw that uh, there was a dividend announcement as well. Yes. So, um, what else for the investors? Is that going to be consistent or <laughs> what can they expect from uh, Definitely uh, consistent. Uh, like uh, we committed uh, in our IPO, we indicated a 9.5% uh, dividend yield uh, annually, which has been the uh, what we have been paying in the past also. Uh, we are 
quite confident that we can uh, keep the, to that promise or even make it better. And also uh, our shareholding will definitely grow uh, better and better in the future because uh, we see lot of growth in the renewable energy sector, particularly in Sri Lanka as well as in the international markets. That's some great news for the investors. And uh, finally, what would be your advice for the uh, people, a general public, uh, when it comes to investing in the Colombo Stock Exchange? Uh, my recommendation is, as I said earlier, don't, don't look at uh, short-term returns. Uh, look at long-term in, uh, uh, CSE investment as long-term investments and invest in uh, uh, stable organizations who has a uh, good growth pattern, the, uh, especially the uh, uh, human capital. Uh, analyze those and um, then you will definitely will not get disappointed. So what are your final uh, thoughts uh, and final words for your investors uh, who are watching us? Uh, I can guarantee that uh, we will keep up to our promises and um, definitely WinForce will be a leader in the, in the renewable energy sector and uh, we will keep on growing. Great, uh, and uh, we hope that uh, with the discussion, our investors got some great insight about the future of Infos PLC as well. And uh, thank you so much, uh, Manjula, for being with us uh, today and also sharing your great insight with us. And uh, thank you very much for being with the Market Inside Sri Lanka. And we will be meeting you soon with another exciting episode very soon.